Welcome back everyone. Let's head down to Northern Kentucky. Jake Ryle on the scene to see if Highlands would get attested, get tested by the Ryle Raiders. Well, welcome to the end zone at Highlands. This is a place that not many tri-state teams have seen much of going up against the Bluebirds this season. Seven points allowed over the past two games for Highlands. Before the game, a special moment at midfield. His dad passed away, as you all know, so he's going to be doing the toss. The son of Jared Lorenzen getting to do the coin toss. His dad, a quarterback for Highlands, the University of Kentucky, and the New York Giants, where he won a Super Bowl. He died in July. And today, wouldn't you know it? It is heads. Highlands, you have won the toss. Highlands won the toss, led by Little Lorenzen, and out of the gate. You knew this was going to be all about the defense. A lot of three and outs because of the heavy hitters like Zachary Lewin coming out of nowhere with the big tackle. The Highlands Bluebird mascot looking as lost as the offense on the field to start the game. But that would change late in the first quarter. Colin Hollingsworth to Joey Deschler. If he were a Dixie Chick song, it would be wide open spaces. Highlands 7-0. Bluebirds trying to keep that momentum going, drawing up something that resembles a Pablo Picasso painting. In this play, a masterpiece. Collingsworth finds the one spot to Hunter Allfeld, and it's a beauty. 14-0, and with a catch that nice, yeah, we're going to throw in an obligatory low-level cutaway. Bluebirds pick up another victory over a 6A opponent with a shutout, 27-0. We learned that we can win ugly, and, and we weren't, things weren't going right in certain situations, and, and we just kept battling and trusting each other. Well, the only thing pretty about the game was it was pretty ugly, but Highlands pulls out the win. They go to 4-1 and one on the season. For now, reporting at Highlands High School, Jake Ryle, 9 Sports. Thanks, Jake. Back to Ohio. Indian Hill played tonight at Deer Park. The Wildcats carried out flags honoring veterans and first responders. The Braves of Indian Hill like to get the ball to Charlie Summerall. We've seen this earlier in games. He hasn't tackled till he hits the 35. Fuse plays later, Summerall again, this time to the end zone. Deer Park tried to answer. They did to a degree. Trey Munson completes the pass to Jamarin Jones. But that drive died and Indian Hill was at it again. Trey Lopez to Amari Whitehead. He tiptoes the sidelines before going out. That just sort of delayed the inevitable. Summerall again with a carry. He scores. Indian Hill wins 63 to 7. We finish the frenzy tonight with Milford playing at Walnut Hills. Wondering how this one might go. Milford in possession in the second half is a fake handoff as Hunter Johnson delivers a strike to Peyton Bauer. He breaks one tackle, but not the second. Walnut Hills had more success in finishing drives. Tyrese Banks Dorn running into the end zone and in this battle of Eagles, the Walnut Hills defense was also productive. That ball's tipped and intercepted by Serena Wynn. That leads to this Tyrese Banks Dorn sprinting down the field. Everyone else given chase Milford tonight by plenty.